Hello and welcome back to the second class of our ECG course. In our previous class, we covered the basics of electrocardiography, including the importance of ECG readings and the equipment used to perform M. Today, we'll be diving deeper into the world of ECGs by discussing the fundamental components of an ECG reading, waves, intervals, and segments. Understanding these components is essential for anyone looking to interpret ECG readings and diagnose potential cardiac issues. So, whether you're a medical professional or simply interested in learning more about ECGs, you won't want to miss today's discussion. Let's get started. The ECG records the electrical activity of a large mass of atrial and ventricular cells, not that of just a single cell. Because cardiac depolarization and repolarization normally occur in a synchronized fashion, the ECG is able to record these electrical currents as specific waveforms, P-wave, QRS complex, ST segment, T wave, and U wave. The spread of stimuli through the atria and ventricles, followed by the return of stimulated atrial and ventricular muscle to the resting state, produces the electrical currents recorded on the ECG. Furthermore, each phase of cardiac electrical activity produces a specific wave or complex. The basic ECG waves are labeled alphabetically and begin with the P wave. The P wave represents the spread of a stimulus through the atria, atrial depolarization. The QRS complex represents stimulus spread through the ventricles, ventricular depolarization. The ST segment and T wave represent the return of stimulated ventricular muscle to the resting state, ventricular repolarization. The U wave is a small deflection sometimes seen just after the T wave. It represents the final phase of ventricular repolarization, although its exact mechanism is not known. The PQRST sequence represents the repetitive cycle of the electrical activity in the heart, beginning with the spread of a stimulus through the atria, P wave, and ending with the return of stimulated ventricular muscle to its resting state, STT sequence. This cardiac cycle repeats itself again and again. So what does a normal ECG look like? A normal ECG should have a consistent and regular waveform with no abnormalities. The P wave should be upright and of similar size and shape for each heartbeat. The QRS complex should be narrow and pointed, and the T wave should be upright and of similar size and shape for each heartbeat. If your ECG results are abnormal, it may indicate that there is an issue with your heart's electrical activity. Abnormal ECG results can include irregular heartbeats, changes in the size or shape of the waveforms, or the presence of additional waveforms. The PQRST sequence is recorded on ECG graph paper, which is divided into small, grid-like boxes. Each small box is 1 mm square, and the paper usually moves at a speed of 25 mm second. Horizontally, each unit represents 0.04 sec, and the lines between every five boxes are heavier, so each 5 mm unit horizontally corresponds to 0.2 second. The ECG can be considered a moving graph that horizontally corresponds to time, with 0.04 second and 0.2 second divisions. Vertically, the ECG graph measures the voltages or amplitudes of the ECG waves or deflections. The electrocardiograph is standardized or calibrated, so that a 1 millivolt signal produces a deflection of 10 millimeters amplitude. The standardization can be set at one half or two times the usual calibration. Because the ECG is calibrated, any part of the P, Q, R, S, and T deflections can be described in two ways. The amplitude, or voltage, and the width or duration of deflection can be measured. A wave or deflection is also described as positive or negative, and a deflection that is partly positive and partly negative is called biphasic. How to calculate your heart rate from an ECG reading? Two simple types of methods can be used to measure the heart rate which is the number of heartbeats per minute from the ECG. The first method is called the box counting method. This is the easiest way to measure your heart rate when it is regular. Count the number of large boxes between two successive QRS complexes and divide 300 by this. For example, in this ECG reading, the heart rate is 75 beats per minute because four large time boxes are counted between successive R waves. When the heart rate is fast or must be measured very accurately from the ECG, you can modify the approach as follows. Count the number of small boxes between successive R waves and divide 1500 by this number. In this example, 20 small time boxes are counted between QRS complexes. 
Therefore, the heart rate is 1500 divided by 20, resulting in 75 beats per minute. If the heart rate is irregular, the commonly used QRS counting method may not be accurate. This is because the time intervals between QRS complexes can vary from beat to beat. However, there is a simple alternative method that can be used to determine the average heart rate, whether it is regular or not. This involves counting the number of QRS complexes in a convenient time interval, such as every 10 seconds, which is the recording length of most 12 lead clinical ECG records. You can then multiply this number by an appropriate factor to achieve 60 seconds, typically 6, to obtain the heart rate in beats per minute. It's important to note that a heart rate exceeding 100 BPM is referred to as tachycardia, while a heart rate slower than 60 BPM is called bradycardia. These terms are derived from the Greek words tachys, which means swift, and bradys, which means slow. During exercise, your heart rate will likely increase and you may experience sinus tachycardia. Conversely, during sleep or relaxation, your heart rate may drop into the 50s or even lower, indicating a sinus bradycardia. In conclusion, while the ECG is a valuable tool for recording cardiac electrical activity, it has its limitations. It does not directly measure mechanical activity or depict structural abnormalities. Additionally, it only records the electrical changes produced by structural defects, and there may be silent electrical areas of the heart. It is important to understand the uses and limitations of the ECG and to recognize that some abnormalities may occur intermittently. Despite these limitations, the 12 ECG leads provide valuable information about normal and abnormal cardiac activity, which will be discussed further in subsequent chapters. Thank you for taking the time to learn with us today. We hope that you found this 100% online and free ECG course valuable, and that it helps you advance your knowledge and skills in this important field. If you did find this course valuable, we kindly ask for your support. Please share this video with your colleagues, subscribe to our channel, and give us a positive evaluation. And if you're able to, please consider donating any amount you can using the link in the description below. Your support will help us continue to provide free, high-quality education to everyone who wants to learn. Thank you again for joining us, and we hope to see you in our next lesson. Best wishes from the Heart Rhythm Center. Before we wrap up, we'd like to let you know that our next class will cover the ECG leads. This is an essential foundation for interpreting ECGs, and we're excited to delve deeper into this topic with you. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss our next lesson. Once again, thank you for joining us today, and we hope to see you soon in our next 100% online and free ECG course.